Hello, and praise the Lord, everyone. I am Pastor Ernest L. Dees with Agape Holistic Life Changing Ministries. I am humbled and honored to share with you on this day what thus says the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious Father, O oh Lord, our God, you have brought us a long, long way. Lord God, we thank you for how it appears that COVID-19 is on the run. Yes, there are many cases and much more to be done, but I thank you for what has already been done. Father, our hearts go out and our prayers go out for all people everywhere that are suffering. Oh God, and and I ask you, God, somehow or another, if you could intervene. Oh, God, listen to the prayers and the cries, oh, God, of the children that are being displaced and that are hungry and cold, oh, God, around the world. And one of the more recent places right there in Ukraine. Lord God, even right here in the States, those that are hungry, oh, God, those that are disenfranchised, and Lord God, we are praying, oh God, that you will somehow or another, oh God, intervene. Hallelujah. Show yourself, oh God. Have mercy, oh God, for thy name's sake. Father, we are praying that your divine will be done. Bless this class, oh God, and all the hearers. In Christ Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. We are so grateful and thankful for the Lord being so wonderful in our lives. Uh, those of you that tuned in on this past Sunday, uh, we mentioned that we will be following up talking about five sonship rights of the believer. So on tonight, we want to mention, uh, talk about five sonship rights of the believer. Now there's a, there's a lot that we could get into. It could take no doubt months. Uh, to really delve into this, but we just want to share with you, amen, basically what they are all about. And uh, tune in, because I am so thankful that, and, and I'm sure the believer has many, 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 many more things that God has promised to him or to her. But we want to mention at least five on tonight. And, you know, as I looked into these and I thought about where I came from, where we came from, the sin that we were born into, and because of the love, the goodness, and the kindness, the grace of God, God just wiped away our sins as if though we had never sinned a day in our lives. And I thank God for that. I want to read in your hearing our scripture lesson coming from Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 17. Follow with me, if you will. I just want to kind of talk a little bit tonight. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. And, you know, that's all-inclusive, male and female. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father, uh, an endearment, if you will. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And the five sonship uh, rights that we want to talk about tonight, uh, the believer is redeemed. The believer is justified. The believer is sanctified. The believer is made righteous. And the last one, the believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, let us look into the, God's word. I want to kind of take you just back a little bit. I want to take you back to the Garden of Eden. And it is commonly said that 
in the Garden of Eden is where paradise was lost. Uh, man was plunged into sin. And in Jesus Christ, paradise was regained. Uh, we're looking at the first Adam and the second Adam. I just want to read a few scriptures in regards to the first Adam. And listen to what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45 through 49. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Look at the, the, the difference between the two. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And after the spiritual, the first man was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And believe it or not, in, 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 we bear uh, the image of the, of the man from uh, the dust. And once we become uh, born again believers in Christ Jesus, we began to bear the image, amen, and characteristics amen, of Jesus Christ, the second Adam. Listen, as was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. But the Bible just backing up just what I said. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. Thank you, Jesus, for the transition. And as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and just think about that. We must, because we were born in sin, uh, God has given us the invitation to get out of sin because of what he did on Calvary's cross. Now, I want you to know something. Jesus Christ is not going to twist your arm and drag you and, and, and beat you up or nothing like that to make you. He made all of us free moral agents. He gave us a, a mind to make up our own mind. He gave us the ability to make up our own mind. But I want you to think about something. The goodness of God ought to somehow or another cause men to, to ought to push men to come to re repentance. As I think about how good God has been, uh, I just want to do what I can to let him know, Lord, I love you. I really praise you. I give you honor. I magnify you. Listen at this. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 21 and 22, for since by man came death, amen, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. And that's why I, I, I try so hard to teach and to preach and to live a life that hopefully is exemplary. Because Jesus Christ, he wants as many as will to accept what he did on Calvary Cross. It is not his will that any should perish. He wants you to live with him throughout eternity. So he's, he, he's, he's explaining to you and talking to you and letting you know what all he has done on our behalf. Um, and, and, and because of Christ Jesus, we all have an opportunity to get all of our sins remitted and forgiven as if though we had never sinned a day in our life. Now, what better deal can you get than that? He paid the price for us, and I just thank him so much. Listen at this. For, for until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed or charged when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. Amen. And I just thank God for how through Jesus Christ, although we were born in sin, he's offered us an opportunity, amen, to get it right. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God, thank you, Jesus, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, was given to many. And I just thank God that we had a penalty, a judgment against us, that we couldn't pay. 
But I thank God that Jesus Christ paid it for us. And I love Romans 5.17. And I might every now and then repeat a scripture for emphasis sake. For if by, for if by the one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one, and that is Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to everlasting life with Jesus Christ. Uh, I thank God for uh, uh, allowing me to hear this gospel. And, and I thank God for, for allowing me to accept uh, what Christ did. And I'm sure that there are some of you right now that Christ is knocking on your door. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how many times you've sinned. The blood of Jesus Christ stands ready right now to erase all of that. Um, you can come to Christ Jesus. You're not so good. You're not so bad that Jesus Christ cannot deliver you or save you. So I want to give you that invitation. Say, so Lord, you know what? I, I want something better than what I have. Well, Jesus Christ has something better for you. Thank you, Jesus. Listen at this. Once a man is born again of water and of the Holy Spirit, there are certain rights given to the believer. They are what is called sonship rights. These are great and precious promises given to the one who has confessed with the mouth that Jesus is Lord, believing in their heart that God has raised him from the dead. These are those, these are the ones that have been born again according to the instructions that Jesus Christ gave to Nicodemus. But Pastor D, what instructions did Jesus Christ give to Nicodemus? Well, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. And Jesus told him, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You were born in sin. We all, anybody basically after Adam was born in sin. Now, Jesus Christ is an, ex an exception. But listen at this. We were born in sin. Iniquity shaped the way we lived. Um, and I'm saying to you today that Jesus is saying, even though you were born in sin, you don't have to stay in sin. We were born, so to speak, to, to rebel against God. But Jesus Christ, amen, has come that we may have life and have life more abundantly. We must be born of water and of the Holy Spirit. And we can see in Scripture, all down through the, the Scripture, particularly the, the apostles in the New Testament, how they carried out this mandate of Jesus Christ. This is nothing that Pastor these conjured up. We have examples in the Bible, amen, how the apostles preached and, he, and, and, and they baptized people in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And many people received the blessed gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the spiritual birth. And when they did, they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance, as the Spirit of God moved on them. I experienced that. And that's one of the most beautiful experiences I've ever had in my entire life. I was nine years old when I received uh, the Holy Spirit. And I, I remember it so vivid today. That's an experience that I don't think anybody would ever forget. Um, and I thank God for it. Let's, let's look at the first sonship right. The, the believer is redeemed. I want you to think about uh, this word redeemed. He's brought back. I want you to think about um, someone who may have been imprisoned, someone that may have been enslaved, and someone come along and say, you know what? Uh, how much does it cost? to get this person out of jail? How much does it cost to get this person out of the slavery? Um, there was a price that Jesus Christ had to pay to get us out of sin. There was a price that Jesus Christ had to pay to get us from being enslaved to sin. And guess what? God set the price. Wow. And the price was uh, death. The penalty for sin was death. There was nobody around to pay it. So 
the word became flesh. And, and that flesh was Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, paid for our pill, our sin. Listen to this. The believer is redeemed, bought back to the Father by the price of the blood of the Lamb. Jesus, the second Adam. Thank you, Jesus. So now, redeemed. We were bought back. Amen. We were redeemed. We were bought. Amen. With the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. We find in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. You want to turn there, if you will. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 through 9. Listen to what it says. In him we have redemption through his blood. Lord, I thank you. And as I talk, I really want you to think about the gravity of what I'm saying. We were really in bad shape. And God had no other way to satisfy the penalty of man. He had set the standard so high. And so he, when he looked around, he couldn't find anybody to pay that penalty. So and he made uh, his word became flesh. And that flesh is what came down here and paid that penalty for mankind. God set the standard. And God, in his own way, he, he, he fulfilled his own standard by allowing his son Jesus to die and pay for all the sin. And it wasn't an easy, it was not a cakewalk. Jesus Christ was bludgeoned. He was beaten. He was spit on. All of those things because for God so loved the world. He loved you. He loved you that much. He did not want to see you perish because God knew that if somehow or another uh, the price wasn't paid, mankind was going to perish, perish. We would, be dis we would be banned from the presence of God forever. Isn't that something? In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Wow, according to the riches of his grace. How rich is that? We can't measure it. It's beyond measure. He is so rich in kindness and grace. Listen at this. This is the NLT. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and amen and prudence. And listen, listen at this. He has showered his kindness on us. Showered. And I know God got so much kindness. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding, having made known to us the mystery of his will. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I just thank God for how and what he has done. Amen. And his son, Jesus Christ, who had no sin, who knew no sin, took upon himself and became sin for us. Lord have mercy. And I think about that. Think about the gravity of that. How awesome God is and how much God loves us. Who wouldn't want to love a God like that? Think about everyday life. Would you want to be in a one-way relationship? You are always doing good. You are always showing somebody that you love them, and 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 and, and, and they just spit in your face. They, they they mistreat you. They treat you like a doormat. Look at the love that God has showered on us. How are we showing our love back to God? The goodness of God, somehow or another, ought to bring men into repentance. Look at how. How are you being treated in, in everyday life? If you were being so good and kind to somebody and they are always throwing dirt in your face, you, 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 show, you give them your very best and they belittle you. So I'm saying to us, let's not belittle God. Let's not throw trash in God's face. Let us show that we love him by being obedient to him. If we love God, we'll keep his commandments. Look, let's look at right number two. The believer is justified. Thank you, Jesus. Being cleansed of sin by the blood of Jesus as if though the believer 
has done no wrong. Isn't that something? Just think about a, a, a rank sinner who cussed God out, may have murdered somebody, may have raped somebody, may have done so many, all kinds of things, but yet if they if believe in Jesus Christ, obey God's word and repent of their sins and turn, and God fill them, them with the blessed gift of his Holy Spirit, they are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and, and they begin to live according to God's word. None of that sin will come up against that person. It will be as though they never sin a day in their life. Look at the grace of God, the goodness of God, the mercy of God. Thank you, Jesus. We've been made right in God's sight. Isn't that awesome? By faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. What more can you ask? Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into the place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. Oh, my goodness. I just thank God for his goodness and his kindness. I'm looking forward to it. Amen. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials. Listen to this now. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. Uh, let me just tell this quick story. In this life, as I was sharing with someone uh, recently, in this life, we can have troubles and trials. And we can have uh, joy along with pain. But joy and pain and troubles and trials and tribulation, all of that is going to coexist in this life. But Jesus said, cheer up. I've overcome the world. I want you to know something. Jesus Christ allowed things to happen to us. It's not going to hurt us. If anything, it's going to make us stronger. I recall the story, that quick light, of this little boy who saw a butterfly trying to come out of a cocoon. So the, what the little boy did, he said, I'm going to help this butterfly. And he went and, and, and popped the cocoon open. And when the butterfly got out, the butterfly couldn't fly. The reason being... The struggle to get out of that cocoon was what really made the butterfly's wings strong enough for him to fly. God knows what it takes, amen, to make us strong enough to deal with everyday life situations. So when you have troubles and trials in life, amen, thank God, pray, and ask God to continue to give you strength because God knows exactly what he is doing. Amen. Let's look at uh, the, the uh, uh, next uh, one here, and that is uh, the believer is sanctified. But before I do that, I want to go back to Ephesians 1 and 4, 1 14. Let me just read that right quick. It's something I want to share with you. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give us the inheritance He promised and that He has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify. We would worship him, exalt him, extol him. And, and listen, God has put in us his Holy Spirit, guaranteeing us that everything he promised us, he gonna do it. And let me tell you something from the, for having the gift of the Holy Spirit, I can tell you now there is nothing like being filled with the blessed gift of his Holy Spirit. And ever so often, you can just feel God moving in your life. He helps me with decisions. He helps me in my daily walk with him. He, he, he helps me uh, not to make the wrong moves. And I just thank God because every day the Holy Spirit is operating in my life. Let's look at the, the third rite of sonship. The believer is sanctified. When I think about sanctified, I think about being set apart being purified, consecrated unto the Lord. And I thank God for that. Uh, God want to set aside people. God want, uh, you know, it's the difference that makes the difference. And if, if we are to be here in this life. We are to be a light that shine in dark places. And there's a lot of dark corners in this life. But God's people are to shine. We are not to be the, the, the run-of-the-mill type people. 
Amen. We ought to exemplify, to show the goodness of God. People ought to be able to look at God's people and see a difference. Amen. In, in, in the way they carry themselves, even in the way they dress themselves, the way they talk, amen, the way they praise God, everything, there should be a difference. Amen. We are set aside. We are set apart. We are royalty. Yes, we are. And I believe 1 Peter 2 and 9 tell us we are royalty. Listen at this. The believer is sanctified. That is to make holy, set apart, purified, consecrated unto the Lord. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 1 and 2 tell us. To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified, those who are set apart in Christ Jesus. And we are called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both there and ours. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I praise God today for allowing us to be, amen, set aside, set apart, amen, for the master's use. Amen. We, 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 it's the difference that makes the difference. And just think now, if we weren't any different from anybody else, if we weren't any different from, from the regular sinner, do you think heaven is going to be filled with sinners? We got to be different. We got to be unique. We got to be a light that shines, amen, in dark places, amen, so that somebody can see God in us and they are want, amen, the, the, the God that we are serving. Thank you, Jesus. You know, listen at this. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. I'm in Romans now, 8, 5 through 17. Those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. L listen carefully now because I'm going to talk about some everyday life situation here in just a little bit. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Let, let, let that kind of sit in there for a little while. If you allow your mind to be controlled by the flesh, your sinful nature, it's going to lead to nowhere good. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. I believe everybody in their right mind wants life and peace. I want to appeal to you. Think about our life right now. Think about how good God has been to us. Don't you want, amen, to, to not only live good in this life, but live good in the life to come? Jesus Christ, it is as if though he has his arms stretched out to all of us right now to so come on to me. I've already paid the price. I want you to live with me in, in throughout eternity. But we, we must be born again because sin cannot enter into heaven. Jesus Christ paid that penalty for us. But listen at this. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. I want you to look today at current affairs. Listen. If one is being guided by the Holy Spirit. I want you to tell me something. Tell me how is it that one wants to deny his neighbor the same rights to vote? If these people are being guided by the Holy Spirit, how can you tell me, amen, that you're going to refuse and try to deny your neighbor the same rights that you enjoy? and try to disenfranchise them from voting or to pursue life and liberty and happiness as they treasure, amen. I can't understand that. If you say you're living according to the Holy Spirit, how is it that you want to deny me the very things that you enjoy? What gives women the right just because they have more tanks, more missiles, or greater nuclear power to go and take their land, kill their citizens, and blow up their buildings, and disrupt their normal order of life. 
This definitely does not seem to me a life that is directed by the Holy Spirit of God. So, so, so there got to be a change somewhere, somehow. Someone definitely is not living according, amen, to the Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. God did not give us a spirit of bondage. We have freedom in Christ Jesus. And I praise God for that. Let's look at right of sonship number four. The believer is made righteous. Lord, I thank you. Can you believe a sinner can be made righteous? Made right by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Not because of any good that we have done. We couldn't, if we, if we work all day, all night, 24-7, we couldn't do enough to make ourselves righteous. Righteousness. Living According to God's word, our ability to stand in the presence of God without feeling any sense of guilt or shame. All of that was nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. We are righteous because of the grace of God, obedient to God's word, receiving the gift of his Holy Spirit, being born again. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Peter 1, 13, so prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. The Holy Spirit helped us to exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed in the world. Lord, I thank you today. I bless you right now. And I want to look at our right of sonship number five. The believer has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Brought back in the right relationship with God. To speak of the Lord, word of God so that others may hear and believe and be reconciled or brought back or made right before God. We find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, feel free to turn there if you will. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone who belongs to Christ, anyone that has been born again, has become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old life is gone. Thank you, Lord Jesus. A new life has begun. And it ought to be seen in your life, in your lifestyle. Thank you, Jesus. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. And God has given us this task of reconciling people to him. Lord, I, I accept that task. I accept that task. Amen. Sharing God's word. Being an example of, of, of God's word. Living God's word day in and day out. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Isn't that something? Man walked away from God, but God got his arms out right now, inviting you to come and be a part of his family. No longer counting people's sin against them. Isn't that awesome? The great God Almighty, not counting our sins at all against us. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. I'm saying to you, come on to God. He loves you. Amen. He, he, he gives us so many benefits day in and day out. He reigns on the just as well as the unjust. God loves you so much. Amen. And, and right now, if, even though we, we are saved, 
If we, if we sin, if we make a mistake and fall short, the Lord God, he is just. If we confess our sins and turn from our wrong, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. Isn't that awesome? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God is good. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Jesus Christ. I just thank God today, and, and I just want to kind of whet your appetite. Look at all the good things that God has done for us. He forgives our sins. Amen. Uh, he, he loves us. He wants us to come back to him. We are justified, made right before God. We can live a righteous life. It is as though we never sinned before. Oh, oh, I just thank God for all of those good things that he has for us. And we are, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Look at all that God has for us. But I say to you today, in order to have all of that, Jesus invites us to be born again of water and of the spirit. We can have it all. God wants you to have it all. I pray to God that we've said something today that will bless you and will help you along the way. Amen. Thank God for this opportunity to share with you the word of God. May God bless you in the name of Jesus Christ and for your continued growth in God's word. We have in-person school of knowledge at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. In-person worship on Sunday mornings at 11.30 a.m. And online word empowerment on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Do not forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please share with your Facebook friends and others for more information on the plan of salvation. And feel free to call now. You may freely call us at 678-759. 8989. Eight, nine. Let us pray. Gracious Father, I pray that we've said something today that someone, somewhere, somehow is blessed and hear your word. And just as you have your arms extended out to them, oh God, they will extend their arm to you. And they will come and receive you as their Lord and their Savior. This we pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. May God bless you richly.